What's up everyone? This is Minnie and today I'm coming at you with my review of the tier 8 American light cruiser the San Diego Now before we get into that a couple of reminders one Don't forget to like the video and make sure to subscribe to my channel to help me keep making great content Right before the posting of this video we've passed 650 subscribers So I really appreciate the support, but there's still about 70% of you watching that haven't hit that subscribe button yet and second I do need to say I did receive this ship as a part of being a community contributor for warships, so I received the ship for the purposes of testing and review from them. Now, the San Diego is a Tier 8 American light cruiser in the style of the Atlanta at Tier 7. She will be available on Friday for 11,300 doubloons as part of the sequential bundles that will come out for her. However, she will be the first bundle you can purchase, so she will come with 11,300 doubloons. You'll be able to purchase her and then spend doubloons on more bundles to get other stuff if you wish, but this ship will be the first bundle. Also of note, there is the 1776 special camel, which I was given by Wargaming, that you will be able to purchase, and there will be a Lady Liberty Commander with a voiceover that is quite nice you should definitely check out because it's a very pleasing voiceover compared to a lot of the ones I hear in this game. Now, about the San Diego. Armor layout, it's got 16 millimeter at the bow, across the middle, and at the stern, though it does have an 89 millimeter citadel uh, belt. It's got 32 millimeter armor on the guns, which you will see in the game while well, that's important to know, and then 13 millimeters on the superstructure. She comes with just over 31,000 health in my build. Artillery is 1,627 millimeter guns with a 14.8 kilometer range, firing both SAP and AP. 4.5 kilometer eight torps that do 65 knots and have an 87 second reload. Intriguingly, for a light cruiser, she comes with a depth charge airstrike so that you can send out the uh, uh, depth charges instead of having to be right on top of stuff, and she's got a 7 kilometer max range. A defense is really impressive for a ship. It's one of the better AA suites in the game. 1,540 uh, damage on shell explosions and 235 on continuous damage. Maneuverability, 32.5 knots, 7.3 second rudder shift time, and a concealment of 9.3 kilometers. But let's get into game, talk about the pros and cons of the ship, and see how she does in action. So for this review, I've pulled a game I played on Two Brothers to watch while I talk about. So, overall, with the San Diego, she's a very intriguing ship. There's a lot of pros, there are a lot of cons that come with her. And at the end of the day, it becomes a question of do the pros outweigh the cons? But let's talk about those. So first off... The Atlanta on the pro side, or sorry, pardon me, the San Diego, she is an Atlanta up a tier, but with a couple more advantages. One of the biggest advantages is that she has sap shells instead of the HE. So when you're seeing that broadside, you're going to be able to get tons of damage with the sap, though you do have the disadvantage of the fact that when you see a heavily angled ship to you, trying to get any sort of damage with your sap shells is going to be very difficult. Additionally, she comes with a plethora of consumables. As we can see here looking at it, we can see we've got the damage control party, a repair party, which really sets her apart from the Tier 7 Atlanta, along with Hydro, DFAA, and a main battery reload booster that gives you a third quicker reload time for 15 seconds. All in all, these combined together make her a potent ship. She has a lot of potential damage that can be output very quickly, especially with that reload booster, but she also is very, very easy to get smashed, just like the Atlanta where if you look at a ship the wrong way, Battleship can come and citadel you from an off angle and suddenly you're down to half your health before the game's even really started. Beyond that, besides her sap, I really do love the AP. The AP is absolutely devastating against cruisers at close range where you can get that flat trajectory there because the AP will go in and you'll be dropping 16 or pardon me 14 shells with a 2100 damage citadel chance on an enemy. But we'll see what the sap really does well here in a second. The sap is a beautiful destroyer killer 
Five and a half second reload does feel slow, but it doesn't matter because once you have them spotted, you're just going to be slapping down on them. And honestly, even that first one, only 2,000 felt low, but you can see just a couple salvos along with a kid and suddenly the Farragut at tier 6 is down because this thing bullies the lower tiers. One of the other features I really love about the ship is the inclusion of that hydroacoustic search at 5 kilometers. I love having that because even though you don't have a smoke, this does enable you to set yourself up on islands and know you're protected. Because with it being an American cruiser, you can take advantage of the, um, the high firing arcs in order to get off shots that otherwise you wouldn't be able to get off here. And you can see as we go into work, we're getting about 650 damage per single shell. Now, with all that being said, there are a couple cons to the ship, obviously. So, the first thing I really struggle with the ship is, as I said, you've got no armor. Everything is going to pen 16 millimeters, and a lot of even just cruisers are going to be able to overmatch you at tier 8 and tier 9 from the heavy line, the armored lines. But your ability to wiggle and turn, even though your speed is not as high as I would like it to be, does mean you have a good chance of being able to dodge. And when you get a broadside, even on a synop there, which is notorious for not having the greatest superstructure, you can see I'm dropping 4,000 to 2,000 to salvo on him. Now... The Torps, the Torps are a gimmick. It's nice to have the Torps. You'll see me use them later this match, but four and a half kilometer range means they are a last gas play because most of the time you're going to get blown to shreds if you try to get close enough to Torp something unless it's a light cruiser or something lower tier than you. One of the really intriguing things about the ship, though, is the AA suite. The AA suite on the ship is ridiculous, and while I personally don't spec this ship, for anti-aircraft guns, you can absolutely make a case to spec it for anti-aircraft guns because you will just melt the planes. And here you can see as I'm shooting at him what the issue is with sap against a heavily angled or close to your target. Unless you're hitting that superstructure high up, you're not going to get a lot of damage. So you can see I hit that superstructure once well, but now I'm not hitting it as well anymore and so I'm getting a lot less damage. But, even though there are all those cons, the heal is one of the best things because that allows you to take some fights otherwise you wouldn't want to take. Because of the fact that you get a heal, and the heal in this case is doing just about 4,000 to 4,500 damage, it means you're able to take fights that in Atlanta you wouldn't want to take because you don't have that heal. So right now, I can be brawling a Byron at 6 kilometers because of the fact that I know I can be able to heal up if it does damage to me. Now, this is admittedly, I will say, a game where I was top tier. The San Diego does have more struggles when you are bottom tier because of the fact that tier 9s and 10s have all the guns to overmatch. But it can also be a blast to play at those top tiers because of the fact that you can just shred from behind islands. And you can see here, using advantage of those American guns, I can slide the shells over that island for the most part. I can't quite break that high spot, but I can slide shells over the vast majority of that island and shoot without being damaged. So, all in all, what does this mean for the San Diego? Is it a good ship? Is it a bad ship? Well, I do recommend the ship. I find the ship a blast to play. Is it a ship that you can play without thinking? No, because you have to be careful because you'll get blown up. But the sap combined with the ability to take the AP in brawls and the heal make this a really intriguing ship. The main battery reload booster is a nice gimmick to print out a bit of damage there or quickly shell out a DD, which makes it fun. And the AA suite means that you can shred even tier 10 planes. So while it does have the negatives I talked about, the low torp range, uh, the ability to get blown up, she is an absolute joy to play. And I have loved playing her. And I've loved testing her out. 
Now, with that said, let's watch this and let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff as we just go through. So, the advantage of the San Diego is just, like I said, being able to take advantage of those hills and fire. But also, it does allow you to do some pretty hilarious stuff here if you time it right. So you're gonna see as we're looking at this game, it's a tied game, basically even on health, they're up on points, but I'm going to line up on this island, and this is where the torps are really fun, where you've got an enemy you know is considering pushing, because you can line up and either push out and torp them, or you can just wait and torp them when they come around. Now for me, I'm waiting for him to take the shots and then I'm gonna push out because I know that if this close a range, he's probably gonna kill me with the angle I'm gonna be giving him. But we're gonna watch and we're gonna see him getting ready to come around and we're gonna make the call that we have to go in here because of the fact that we've got the sub behind us. And here, by the way, the depth charges, you can see the depth charges are really nice. 40 second reload and you get two of them. Even though he's gonna turn out and not take as much as I was hoping he would take there. AKA, he's not going to take anything because he got out of the line of them. It's really nice to have that quick reload. And now that we're spotted, and since I'm in a terrible line anyway, we're just gonna come around and we're gonna go for the torping. And you can see I'm trying to nose in here and I'm very fortunate he doesn't get me more. But that does give me the ability to drop the torps and just ruin his day. Now, one thing you may have noticed there, you noticed that he broke one of my guns. That is something you have to be careful of because with 32 millimeter plating on your guns, you are liable to get your guns broken a lot because that's at a level where a lot of guns will be able to pen. And if you run into the 460 millimeter above ships, if they hit the uh, gun, your gun is gone and half your ship's gone probably as well. But with this ship, as we look in now, we're watching the game and we're up on uh, ships, we're down on health, and we're down on caps. So that allows me to do what cruisers love to do. Survive to the late game, and then just wreak havoc. And so as we're gonna push through here, you're gonna see one of my other slight regrets is, like I said, the low speed. So we're only gonna get up to about 32 knots, and I do wish it had more speed. Because giving it more speed would make it really, really nice for games because of the fact that it does feel a little bit slow. I wish it was about 35 knots. And so we're going to come through here. We're going to watch the North Carolina because he's going to want to kill me. But you'll notice, remember, I've used two heals. So I would be down to about 12,000 health if I was in Atlanta. Or pardon me, actually, I've used three heals. So I'd be down to about... Uh, I'd be down to about 8,000 health if I was in Atlanta. But because I'm the San Diego and I don't have that heal, I can use it. Now we're going to continue to push through the cap here with the Heinrich. And we got the Heinrich over there to deal with the North Carolina. So we're going to look for that kid and that flint. And make sure to watch the end because I know I use AP on the flint so you get a chance to see what it can do. But as we push forward here, we're going to look to see where their ships are. And so we're going to know that the North Carolina is being engaged. He's dead. That leaves them with just two ships. So we're going to push and hunt for the kid. Try to find where he is after we take the cap. But we are going to see... There's the flint. And so we're going to switch to the AP. But we're going to switch back to the sap to try to get the kid. Unfortunately, no. But there's where the heel comes back into use. And so we're going to keep dodging and looking and trying to maneuver and not get hit. And you can see even the flint right there hurts one of my guns. And you can see the change over to the AP right here. And you can see the AP just absolutely deletes him. I pop a main battery reload booster, and that was sped up admittedly to two times game speed, but the double sit and the ability to quickly kill him. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, the game is done. The kid runs for a while because that's what the kid does. But the game is over. So I hope that gives you a good feeling for the San Diego and helps influence your choice on whether to buy it or not. As always, don't forget to like, 
the video and make sure to subscribe to my channel to help me keep making great content. This is Minnie, signing off.